Good morning, dear students. Uh, today we are going to solve May June 2019 1-1 paper. My name is Farhan Mazar, and the course we are studying is Physics 5054. Let's start the paper. So the first question on your screen, which quantities are both vectors? Acceleration and length? No. Distance and velocity? No. Length and distance? No. Velocity and acceleration? Yes. This is the option. Velocity and acceleration, both are vectors. So his question was, which both quantities are vectors? So D is the right answer. For question number one, D is the right option. Two forces X and Y X as shown. Which diagram shows the resultant force R of X and Y? Okay, let me reduce the size so you can see all the options. So you see, when you want to find out the resultant of the two vectors, and here we have the first vector, and on the head of the first vector, we have the tail of the second vector. So to get the resultant, According to the head to tail rule, join the tail of the first vector with the head of the last vector. Join the tail of the first vector with the head of the last vector, and that will be your result. So I will join this with the head of the last vector, and I will draw arrows towards the head of the last vector. So you see, C is the right option. Question number two C is the right option. Okay, the next question on your screen is, which reading is given to one-tenth of a millimeter? One-tenth one -tenth of a millimeter means that if a measurement is in millimeters, after point, you go to one decimal place. So if you have a measurement, which is uh, uh, up to, correct up to one decimal place, and its unit is millimeter, that will be our answer. But the problem is that the, all the readings which are given here, they are in centimeter. Look at this, centimeter, 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 centimeter. So first we need to convert them into millimeters. I've done this on a paper, let me show you. So on your screen, I hope you can see. Okay, so question number one is on your screen, uh, question number three is on your screen. 3.3 centimeter, multiply it with 10 and it will be converted into millimeter. So it's 33 millimeter. 3.31 centimeter, it will be 33.1 millimeter. 3.310 centimeter, multiply it with 10 and 33.10 millimeter. 3.312 centimeter, it will be 33.12 millimeter. So which reading is in millimeters and is correct to one decimal place? So B. B looks the right option, sir. For question number three, B, because this goes after decimal at one decimal place. So that is the one-tenth of a millimeter. One-tenth means um, after point, one place. So B is the right option, sir. Question number three, B is the right option. The magnitude of three different electric charges are given below. What is the correct order of size from largest to smallest? From largest to smallest, okay. So this, um, the units are Coulomb, we have small m, capital M, and K Coulombs. So K Coulombs is uh, kilo Coulombs, and the capital M means mega, and small m means milli, you know. Mega is 10 raised to power six coulombs. 10 raised to power six coulomb. And kilo is 10 raised to power three coulomb. And milli is 10 raised to power minus three coulomb. Okay. So, so the first should be mega, then should be kilo and then should be milli. So C is the right option, sir. C is the right option. For question number four, C is the right option. Mega coulomb is the largest. Kilo coulomb is the 
then and the smallest is milli coulomb so c is the right option four of the gravitational forces that act between bodies in the solar system are listed below p the force on the moon due to the earth q the force on the earth due to the sun r the force on the earth due to the moon as the force on the moon due to the sun which two forces are our newton's third law pair action and reaction you know action and reaction is always between two bodies for example if you have moon and it exerted force on earth and the earth exerted force on moon so the moon exerts if the body a exerts force on body b the body b should exert force on the body a the forces should be equal in magnitude but op opposite in direction so p the force on the moon due to the earth and r the force on the earth due to the moon that is a newton's uh, third law pair so p and r so the option looks b question number 5 b is the right option sir Let me reduce the size so you can see the whole question. A hot air balloon is traveling at constant velocity and is at a constant height above the ground. The diagram shows the only four forces acting on the balloon. Which statement is correct? Because the balloon is moving at a constant velocity, so the forward and the backward force they are equal. So y and w they are equal. And it's also moving at a constant height, so upward and downward force is also equal. Z and X they are also equal. So it means W and Y they are equal, and X and Z are equal. So A is the right option. Question six A is the right option. W and Y forward and backward they are equal because the constant velocity is constant, and X and Z are equal because it's moving at a constant height. So A is the answer. The diagram represents an object O moving from X to Y along a circular path at constant speed. What is the direction of the resultant force on O in the position shown? You know, whenever a body moves in a circular path, the direction of the resultant force is always towards the center of that circle. So if this is the circle, then its center will should be here somewhere. So O D is the right direction, so D is the option because the direction of the resultant force is always toward the center of the circle if the body moves in a circular track. So D is the right option. Question seven D is the right option. Question number eight. Four objects of different masses are situated in places with different gravitational field strengths. Which object has the greatest weight? You know, in every op option, the mass and the g value is given. So you can find the weight. The formula is very simple. W equals to mg. So apply that formula. The mass is given. The g value is given. Just multiply them. You will get the weight. So then we will see after calculating the weight for every option, then we'll see which where the weight is greatest. I have done this on a paper. Let me show you. Okay, this is question number eight on your screen. So weight mg three into ten point four, and the answer is thirty one point two newton. Three point five into nine point five, thirty three point seven three newton. Four into ten point two, and the answer is forty point eight newton. And 4.5 into 9.0, and the answer is 40.5 newton. So the largest weight is 40.8 newton. So it's probably the C option. So question number eight, C is the option. I hope you have understood. So C is the option. Four point, and this mass and this gravitational field strength gives the greatest weight. C is the right option. Here we go. 
a uniform meter rule is balanced by a four newton weight as shown what is the weight w of the meter rule so here you see here we have a pivot here this force four newton force the distance between the pivot and this force is 10 centimeter this is trying to produce uh, anti clockwise turning effect about the pivot the weight of the rule is at here is the center of gravity so here is its weight acting its distance from the pivot is uh, 40 centimeter so it's trying to produce clockwise turning effect so the anti clockwise moment and the clockwise moment they are equal because they said that uh, the rule is balanced so from clock anti clockwise moment equals to clockwise moment 4 into 10 equals to W into 50. And from there, you can find the value of the W. I've done this on a paper. Let me show you that. So here we go. See, um, anti clockwise moment is equals to clockwise moment. F1, D1 equals to F2, D2. 4 multiply 10 equals to W multiply 40. So W will be equals to four into 10 divided by 40 and the answer will be one Newton. So the weight of the meter rule is one Newton. Let me see here. So A is the option. Question number nine, A is the right option. Which statement about center of mass is correct? A object with the center of mass at the same height as less are less stable when the base is larger when the base is larger and the center of the mass is has the same heights they will be more stable objects with the center of mass at the same height are more stable when the base is larger yes that's true that's true statement Objects with a higher center of mass and smaller bases are more stable. That's wrong. Objects with identical bases are more stable when the center of mass is higher. That's also wrong. So B was the right option, sir. Question number 10, B is the right option. If the center of uh, masses are have the same heights, then if the base is larger, then the thing will become more stable. So B is the right option. A garden table weighs 60 Newton and has a top surface of area 2 meters square. It is raining and the rain produces a pressure of 4 Newton per meter square on the table. Ignoring the pressure of the atmosphere, what is the force exerted by the table on the ground? So the forces which are acting on the ground by the table is one is the weight of the table plus the force which was produced by the pressure of the rain. So we can calculate that force. We know the area of the table. We know the pressure of the rain. I've done this on a paper. Let me show you. You see, here on your screen, I hope you can see. Force of rain is pressure multiply area. You know, uh, the pressure is force divided by area. So force is pressure multiply area. The pressure of the rain is four. And the area of the tabletop is 2. So multiply them, you will get 8 Newton. So that is the force which is uh, uh, on the table due to the rain. And uh, so the force on the ground by the table will be the force of the rain plus the weight of the table. So the 8 Newton plus 60 Newton and the answer will be 68 Newton. So question number 11, the answer is 68 Newton. So D is the right option. Question number 11, D is the right option. I hope you have understood. The diagram shows a manometer containing mercury that is sealed at one end. What happens to the distance H when the manometer is taken higher up a mountain? When you go when you go higher up a mountain, you see, uh, if you will go higher up a mountain, then uh, the pressure, the atmospheric pressure will decrease. So if the atmospheric pressure will decrease, the difference of levels in both the limbs, that will also decrease. 
So the value when you go up on the mountain, the atmospheric pressure will decrease and this H value should also decrease. So yeah, A is the right option. It decreases because atmospheric pressure decreases with height. So for question number 12, A is the right option. Due to interconnectivity, you know, my uh, voice may be having some problem. But I hope that you have understood. You know, this H gives the, uh, the, the, the atmospheric pressure. When you go up on a mountain, the atmospheric pressure decreases. That's why this H value should also decrease. So question number 12A is the right option. Some doctors measure blood pressure by using a mercury manometer. Blood pressure varies by 5.6 kilopascal as a heart beats. The density of the mercury is 14,000 kg per meter cube and gravitational field strength G is 10 Newton per kg. What is the change in the height difference, height difference between the levels in the manometer during a heartbeat? So we know the pressure in kilopascal, we can convert this into height of mercury. The formula is very simple. The pressure is equal to rho GH and we will get the value of the H out of it. I've done this on a paper. Let me show you. Okay. So on your screen, you can see P is equal to rho GH and H is equal to pressure divided by rho G. Pressure is 5.6 X for 3. And the rho, which means the density, 14,000 and the G value is 10. Just do this calculation. The answer will be 0 0.04 meter. Multiply it with 1000 to convert the meters into millimeters. So the final answer will be 40 millimeter. 40 millimeter is the answer. So A is the choice. Question number 13, A is the right choice. The diagram shows a stationary fair ground ride with four chairs of equal mass. Which chair has the most gravitational potential energy? That chair which has the uh, greatest height from the ground has the greatest gravitational potential energy. And clearly the seat A, its height is the greatest. So it will have the most gravitational potential energy. So A is the right choice. You know, the gravitational potential energy is MGH. So it depends upon the height from the ground. So A is the right answer. Um, question 15, the diagram shows a small car of mass 500 kg approaching a hill. It moves up the hill with constant speed. The gravitational field strength G is 10 Newton per kg. Ignoring friction, how much work is done in moving the car up the hill? You know, the work done can be calculated by two ways. If I know the force and the direction and the distance traveled in the direction of the force, then the work done will be force multiplied, the distance traveled in the direction of the force. Another way of calculating the work done is to calculate the increase in the gravitational potential energy. If you know the mass of the object and if you know the vertical height it gain, we can calculate the work done by work done is equals to gain in the potential energy. And the potential energy formula is MGH. So just put the value of the mass and the vertical height and the value of the G. And let me show you my work. I've done this on a paper. Okay, question 14 is on your screen. I hope you can see it. Work done is equals to the gain in the gravitational potential energy. And work done is equals to MGH. M is 500 multiplied 10 multiplied 10. And the answer is 50,000, which means 5 x per 4 joules. 5 x per 4 joules. Let me see. 
five as per four Jews. So B looks the right answer, sir. Question number 15, B is the right option. Which statement is correct? Infrared radiations cannot travel in vacuum. That's wrong. They can travel in vacuum. Infrared radiations cannot travel in solids or in gases. Infrared radiations can travel in gases. Infrared radiation can only travel in a vacuum. That's wrong. Infrared radiation can travel in a vacuum and in gases. Yes, that's right. So D is the right option. Question 16, D is the right option. The diagram shows a set of operators used to determine the specific heat capacity of water. So what does not affect the rate at which energy is lost to the surrounding? Insulating the container, it will reduce the rate of uh, evaporation. It will reduce the heat loss to the surrounding. Placing a lid on the container, yes, it will reduce the heat loss to the surrounding. Polishing the outer surface of the container, yes, it will reduce the heat loss to the surrounding. Moving the thermometer close, closer to the heater, yeah, yeah, that is the thing which will not change the heat loss to the surrounding. So D is the option, it's an easy one. So D is an option which will not affect the heat loss to the surrounding. So D is the right option. Two thermometers X and Y contain different liquids but are otherwise identical. The thermometers are heated through the same temperature rise. The volume of liquid in thermometer X increases by more than the volume of liquid in thermometer Y, which is more sensitive thermometer and which is more, which is the thermometer with a larger range. Uh, the X expanded more. The liquid in the X expanded more, so it will be more sensitive, and the other one will be has the larger range. So X will be more sensitive because the liquid in it expands more for the same change in temperature. So X will be more sensitive, and because the Y expands less, so it will have more range, larger range. So more sensitive is the X, and the larger range is Y. So B is the option. Question number 18, B is the right option, sir. Here we have, uh, the diagram shows two thermometers P and Q that are identical, except that P contains less mercury. So which statement is correct? The lowest measurable temperature is the same on P and on Q. Uh, we doubt that. The range of the P is equals to the range of Q. That's strong. The scale on P and Q are both linear. That is true. They are definitely linear. And uh, the sensitivity of P is equal to the sensitivity of the Q. We are not sure about this, but about C, we are 100% sure because both the thermometers have mercury in them. So the scale, it will be linear. They both will be linear. So C is the right option, sir. The best answer is C. Question number 20 is on your screen. The diagram shows air trapped in flask by a small volume of water in a thin tube. When the flask is held in the student's hand, the small volume of water first moves down from P to Q and then up to R. Why does the small volume of water moves like this? This question has also come in theory paper. Okay. So you see, when you... Uh, Hold the flask in your hand. The temperature of the air and the flask will rise a little bit because of the heat in your hand. So first the flask will expand. So the level of the 
that water drop in the when the class will expand that water drop will come down to q then the heat will reach the air inside the flask and then that that air will start expanding now the expansion in the flask because it's a solid is less but for the same rise in the temperature the expansion in the air inside the flask will be much larger because air is a gas it's gas i mean so it will have more expansion than the liquid so when the air will start expanding it will have much more expansion than the flask had so the level of that water droplet in that tube will go up due to the expansion in the air and the expansion has and the air has expanded much more than the flask so the water level will go to the position up the flask expands and then the air contracts that's wrong the flask contracts and then the air expands that's wrong the flask expands and then there then the air expands less than the flask no that's wrong the flask expands and then the air expands more than the flask the flask expands and then the air expands more than the flask that is the right answer i remember this diagram and this question also came in theory paper and there you have to actually describe that the why the drop went up okay so let's move to the next question uh which statement about particles in a liquid is correct they all have the same speed that's wrong they are stationary that's wrong they move at random that is true they vibrate about a fixed point that's wrong so the particles in a liquid they move at random so c is the best option question number 21 c is the best option question 22 a gas is enclosed in a container of fixed volume the volume cannot be changed the gas gains heat energy from an external source what happens to the molecules of the gas when the gas is at fixed volume and it absorbs heat energy the temperature of the gas will rise which means that the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules have increased which means that now they are moving faster so a option is they expand that's wrong they move faster inside the container that is the right answer they move further apart that is not possible because the volume has not changed they vibrate with greater frequency uh, that is mm -hmm. they are moving around not vibrating so they move faster inside the container that is the best best answer b question number 22 b is the right option sir which waves are longitudinal you know the sound waves they are longitudinal and ultrasound is also a sound wave so that's why the c is the option gamma rays light waves x rays they all are transverse wave ultrasound is longitudinal wave so c is the right option question number 23 c is the right option a ray of light strikes a plane mirror at an angle of incidence of 20 degree the angle of incidence is then increased by 5 degree what is the new angle between the incident ray and the reflected ray so let's check what is the new angle of incidence it was 20 degree and then you increased it by 5 degree so the new angle of incidence is 25 degree centigrade uh, 25 degrees not centigrade sorry so the angle of incidence is now 25 degree centigrade so what will be the angle of reflection that will be also 25 degrees angle of incidence and angle of reflection they are equal 
So what is the angle between the angle uh, between the incident ray and the reflected ray? Angle of incidence plus angle of reflection. So 25 plus 25 and the answer will be 50 degree. 50 degree is the right answer. So D is the right choice. Question number 24. D is the right choice, sir. It's a new question. A parallel beam of light is incident on a thin diverging lens. The focal length of lens is FL as shown in the diagram. So here we have two light rays which are parallel to each other and they are going to pass through the diverging lens. So one of the light ray will pass through the optical center. So obviously it will not deviate, it will go straight. So the figure A is correct in this sense, A is correct. And C is correct in this sense, that the light ray which is passing through the optical center should be go, uh, they should pass through the lens without a deviation. So A and C, they might be the answers. B and D, they are straightforward wrong because the light ray which passed through the optical center should have gone undeviated. So B and D cannot be the answer. So they are out of option. So they are out of our options. So A and C out of this, which road diagram shows the beam after it has passed through the lens? Okay. So just look at here. This ray has bended towards the, you know, towards the F on this side. That is the characteristic of a converging lens. So A is not the option. So the best option is C. So see how we ruled out the wrong options and then the choosing the correct option became correct. So C is the best option, sir. Question number 25, C is the right option. Okay. The following list shows colors of the spectrum, which list shows these colors in order of increasing frequency. That, you know, we have, uh, we have made a code word for this, and that is Roy G. Biv. Roy, R-O-Y, G. Biv, G -B -I -V. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So, D is the right option, sir. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet has missed the indigo, but the order is correct. Roy G. Biff, R-O-Y-G-B-I-V. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. That is the correct order of increasing frequency. So D looks the best option, sir. Question number 26, D is the best option. Four sound waves are displayed on the screen of a cathode ray oscilloscope. Which sound wave gets louder and has a pitch that decreases? So when the sound is gradually becoming louder, its amplitude should increase. And amplitude means the height above the mean position. So which... You know, B and D, they both are becoming gradually louder because their amplitude is gradually increasing. So B and D, A and C, their, their amplitude is gradually decreasing. So A and C cannot be the answer. So B and D, they are the two options. Then he says that the pitch that decreases, if the frequency decreases, then it means the time period should increase. So the wave should become has the wave should gradually the time period of the wave should gradually increase. So here you see here the wave time period is here the time period here the wave is completed in two squares and then the wave is completed in four squares. So clearly here the the sound wave has, uh, the wave I mean, has more uh, amplitude and 
its time period has increased time period when time period increases it means the frequency has decreased it means the pitch has decreased so b is the right option a little bit tricky here we go so here we have a question a student investigates a permanent magnet by suspending paper clips from the magnet as shown so here we have a permanent magnet and these are the paper clips which statement is correct each paper clip has a south pole at the top and a north pole at the bottom when suspended from the permanent magnet that's wrong here we should, we should have a north and here should south and then north and south and north and south so the first statement is wrong if the paper clips are made of soft iron they become demagnetized when the permanent magnet is removed that's true because soft iron is a soft magnetic material and when you remove it from the permanent magnet they lose its magnetism very quickly so b looks the good option sir question number 28 if the c is the if the paper clips are made of steel they become magnet demagnetized when the permanent magnet is magnet is removed that's wrong because if there's they are made of steel they retain their uh, magnetism for a longer time these more paper clips can be suspended from the north pole no no that's not true on both ends of this bar magnet it will have the strength, same strength so that is also wrong so b is the right option question number 28 b is the right option Two vertical wires pass at right angle through a piece of card. There is a large current in each wire in the direction shown. A plotting compass is placed in the, uh, on the card. Uh, the diagram shows the direction in which the needle of the plotting compass points. So here we have two conductors. This conductor means that the current is coming out of the page. Sorry, this conductor means that current cross means that the current is going into the page. And this dot means that the current is going uh, coming out of the pitch so we can apply the right hand rule for the straight conductor and check what will be the direction of the magnetic field so if this is your right hand hold the right hand in such a way that the thumb is in the direction of the current then the curves of your right hand the curves of your finger of your right hand they are telling you the direction of the magnetic field so dot Current is coming out of the page. So I apply right hand rule. It means the direction of the magnetic field will be anti-clockwise. So the magnetic field around here will be anti-clockwise. So you can put a circle here and put arrows so to show the anti-clockwise direction. This cross means that the current is going into the page. So apply the right hand grip rule for the straight conductor. And when I apply it, from here when I see it means that the direction of the magnetic field will be clockwise. So draw a circle here and put arrows to show the direction of clockwise. So when you will have drawn these two circles, then you will see that in the middle of these two, the magnetic field uh, due to this lower conductor in the middle, and the magnetic field due to this conductor with here the current is coming out of the page uh, sorry the current is going into the page the magnetic lines will have the same direction in the middle and that will be towards left from right to left so the this magnetic compass magnetic compass always follow the direction of the magnetic lines it align itself with the, the magnetic lines so the magnetic compass placed here will also point towards left. So C is the right answer. So C is the right answer. I hope that you have understood it. If you know to how to apply the right hand grip rule for the straight conductors and by drawing a single circle around this conductor and this conductor and put is putting by putting the arrows to show the direction of the magnetic field, whether it is clockwise or anti-clockwise, you will observe that in the middle of uh, both the conductors, the direction of the magnetic field will be same it will from left to right so if you put a magnetic compass here it will follow those lines 
and it will also point the pointer of the magnetic compass will point towards left so c is the right option question number 29 c is the right option i hope you have understood here we go so this might not be that visible to do to you but you can hear it the diagram shows a car ignition switch and a starter motor the ignition switch is in a circuit with long thin wire the starter motor is in a circuit with short and thick wires what is the explanation for the choice of wires you see this is the ignition switch it has very thin wires and the reason is it has very low current and here in the ignition the starter motor sorry the wires are thick the reason is it has large amount of current flowing through it the thin wires they have a larger resistance so if the amount of current will be larger the heat produced will be too much here they are thick the reason is they have low resistance and the large amount of current can flow through them safely so they are thick wires in the starter motor the reason is it's so the La the reason is because it contains large amount of current and here we have thin wires the reason it here we have smaller amount of current so which is the explanation for the choice each circuit needs to contain the same total mass of wire that's wrong thicker wires heat up more quickly when their relay is relay is switched on no that's wrong thin wires have lower resistance that's wrong thin wires have higher resistance the ignition switch circuit carries a smaller current than the starter motor circuit that is the true reason ignition has small current so it there, there you can put the thin wires but the starter motor has larger current 100 ampere current is flowing so there you put the wires which are thick so d is the right option sir D is the right option you can see this so D is the right option D is the right option Question 31 is on your screen. The diagram shows some white plastic beads in a clear plastic box. The box is shaken and the beads rub against the box. And the beads stick to the inside surface of the box. Which row is possible explanation for this? The reason is when you shake it, the plastic beads and the plastic box the beads have rubbed against the walls of the plastic box and they are charged now so one of them has lost electrons the other one has gained electron so because they have the box inside walls of the box and the beads they are charged now and they would have opposite charges so that's why they are the beads are uh, stick with the inner surface of the walls of the plastic box so which row is possible explanation for this box gains electron beads no change of electron that's wrong one of them lose electron one of them gain electron b box loses electrons and beads gain electron yeah that's the right option sir b is the right option question number 31 b is the right option okay which unit is the same as a volt so you know a formula for the volt is uh, joules per coulomb because the re the formula for the volt is um, energy divided by charge in that case the the unit will be for volt the unit can be joules per coulomb another formula for the volt is you know the power is equals to iv 
power equals to i v so v is equals to power divided by i v is equals to power divided by i which means watt divided by ampere watt divided by ampere so d looks the best option sir question number 32 d d is the right option Power is equals to IV, V is equals to power divided by I, where power is in watts and I is in ampere. The voltage current graph for a metal wire is shown. What does the gradient of this graph represent here? On the Y axis, we have voltage. On the X axis, we have current. If I will take it slow, that will be the change in the Y divided by change in the X. That means change in the V divided by change in the I. And V by I is equals to resistance. So the gradient of this graph is equals to the resistance of the wire. Gradient of the, this graph is equals to the resistance of the wire. So D is the right option. Question number 33, D is the right option this is the right option sir d the resistance of the wire question 34 what is the symbol for a device that measures current the device that measures current is ammeter and ammeter is here a choice question number 34 a choice easy question the cable to an electric cooker contains live wire, a neutral wire, and an earth wire. When the cooker is working correctly, in which wires are the current equal? You know, the current which is coming in the live wire through the neutral wire is going back. So there is no current in the earth wire in normal conditions. So the current which is coming from the power supply is in the live wire, and the same amount of current is going back. To, uh, to the power supply by the neutral wire. So the current in the live and the neutral, they are equal to each other. So D looks the right option, sir, the neutral and the live only. D, question number 35, D is the right option. The coil of a simple motor lies, be lies between the poles of a permanent magnet. The coil rotates about its axis when there is a current in it. What decreases the frequency of rotation of the coil? Increasing the number of turns in the coil, increase the number of turns of the coil, it will increase the frequency of rotation of the coil. Reversing the current, it will have no effect on the frequency of the rotation. Only the direction of the rotation will change. Using a lower voltage supply, that's, yes, that will decrease the frequency of rotation. And using a stronger magnet, using a stronger magnet will increase the frequency of rotation of the coil. So C is the best option. It will not decrease. The, what decreases the frequency of rotation of the coil? Using a lower voltage supply, that will decrease the frequency of rotation of the coil. So C is the right option. The beam of electrons travel through a vacuum. The beam passes between the poles of a magnet as shown. What is the direction of the conventional current and what is the direction of the magnetic field? You know, this is the flow of electrons. So the conventional current will be opposite to it. So the electron flow is from left to right. The conventional current should be from right to left. So, and the magnetic field direction is from north to south from north to south. So magnetic field is going upward and the conventional current is going towards left. So D is the right option, sir. Question number 37, D is the right option. I hope you understand this, it's easy. A teacher uses the circuit shown. 
the identical lamp packs and why are connected to a low voltage ac power supply by high resistance transmission wires these wires have very high resistance both lamps are switched on okay both these lamps are parallel to each other when you close them they will be acting like parallel to each other lamp packs is then switched off then you open this only this y is on Lamp axis then switched off, lamp Y stays switched on. What happens to the voltage and the power supply to the Y? You know, uh, they both are taking the same voltage. When they are both on, they are taking the same voltage. And the voltage drop on both of them, combined voltage drop on both of them is equal to the voltage drop in a single of them. And the voltage drop depends upon the resistance here, their combined resistance. Because they are connected in parallel to each other, so that's why their combined resistance will be less than their individual resistance. When you open this, the resistance here has increased. You know, when you connect two clamps in parallel to each other, the combined resistance of parallel combination is less than the resistance uh, of uh, of the smaller of them so when you open it then there is only lamp wire there so its resistance will be more than the combined resistance when they were connected x and y they were parallel to each other so more the resistance more will be the voltage drop here so the voltage drop here will increase the voltage drop across the Y, voltage drop across the Y should increase because its resistance is more now. Before it was uh, in parallel with the X, so the resistance was low. But when X is removed, the Y will have its original resistance and that will be definitely more than the combined resistance of X and Y in parallel combination. So the voltage drop will be more. So what happens with the power supply? So the power supplied uh, increases. The power used by Y, I mean, that will increase. The reason is because the voltage drop has increased here. And because the transmission lines have a very high resistance. And this change in the resistance here has not that much effect on the resistance of the whole circuit. Here the resistance has increased definitely, but that do not change the total resistance. The total resistance is very high because the long transmission lines, they have very high resistance. They are long, long transmission lines and they are uh, high, they have high resistance. So the current coming from the source will still the same, but the voltage has dropped across the Y has increased. So that's why the power will increase the power loss across the y that will increase so c is the right option it's a new question it's a tricky question i hope that you have understood the the, the concept <coughs> okay here we go we have question number 39 a car battery supplies a current in one direction a current in the opposite direction recharges the battery. Which circuit recharges the battery using an alternating current supply and a diode? The battery will be charged when the current will enter from the positive terminal of the battery. The battery will charge if the current enters the battery from the positive terminal of the battery. Okay, so where where in these diagrams the diode will allow current towards the positive terminal of the battery a choice if the current will flow in this direction this diode will uh, forward biased with regard to that current and it will let the current come here and it will recharge the battery okay so a is the right option here we go here we have question number Okay. 
Question number 40 is on your screen. A neutral atom of boron contains five electrons and five protons. The nucleon number, mass number of the atom is 11. How many neutrons are there in the atom? Number of neutrons are equals to nucleon number minus proton number. That's 11 minus five. The answer is six. So number of neutrons are six. So, uh, yeah. So the number of neutrons are six. So C is the right option, sir. C is the right option for question number 40. So I hope it's clear to you, my dear students. Uh, today we have done uh, May, June, and Today, uh, my dear students, today we have done uh, May, June 2019, 1-1 one, one paper. It was a MCQ paper. The course we are studying is Physics 5054. My name is Farhan Mazar, and I hope that these videos are helping you in preparing for your O-level exam. Thank you very much, and have a good day. And God bless you all. Thank you.